Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be painting the biggest swim bait I've ever seen. And this thing is huge. It's insane. It's, it's bigger than my head. And it probably weighs more too. If you know what I mean. Now this thing is huge. And I'm going to show you what we're going to make out of it. We're going to paint this into a realistic yellowfin tuna with a nice color shifting belly and a lot of candies and it's really nice and transparent, it looks very realistic but that's not the fun part, the fun part is on the other side we're gonna create a biomechanical tuna a huge gashing wood on the other side so you can see all the mechanical parts with some chemicals running here in tubes but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna create a stunning art piece and I am so proud of this one. But the thing that I'm the most excited about is that we're gonna auction this bait through a Swedish non-profit organization called Liv Lina. And I really hope this is gonna raise a lot of money. And for the money that this lure gets auctioned, all that money is going to support Ukraine. And in some kind of way I wanted to help out. And the best way to help out is to do what you do best. For me that is lure painting, or that's the only thing I know actually. So in this way I wanted to be supportive and help those people out there. No further ado, we're gonna start right now. Now first of all I need to tape the entire side of the lure, which is gonna represent the gashing wound. And I like to rip tape for that, so that you don't get any straight lines. But by ripping the tape you're gonna get these jagged edges and it's gonna look more realistic. So the edges of the tape is gonna look more like a wound. Next thing after we taped our lure is drawing out the design. And I already had a good idea in my head of what I wanted to draw. But of course I looked at a lot of reference pictures as well, just to get an idea how things look like and how I would draw them on the lure. And now that the drawing is finished, I need to trace all the lines and cut them all out with my X-Acto knife. It's a very slow and long process, but it's really worth it because you will be creating a custom stencil for every little piece and detail, which you can place back after you painted it to cover it up again so you can do the next detail or part besides to it. First of all, I'm gonna start with the gill plates. And I'm gonna use Wicked Detail Black and I'm also gonna cover a few other parts because I don't want to change color every time when we start a new piece. So we're gonna try to save a little bit of time on that. But first of all, Wicked Detail Black, we're gonna create a little bit of a darker background for the metallics and everything in certain places. So most of our background is darkened now and I'm gonna use a little bit of Wicked Silver and I'm gonna use this stencil from Vallejo and I'm gonna create a nice background. Right, now with some Vallejo Cold Grey I'm gonna put some more of these on the foreground now because this is an opaque paint. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of Vallejo white aluminium and I'm gonna make these sprockets that we just did in the opaque paint a little bit more metallic. some wicked detail black magenta in my chamber and I took my detailing airbrush which is an Iwata CMC or custom micron 
and I'm gonna put a shadow on some of these sprockets but keep in mind that the light is coming from above on this piece of art so most of the shadows will be will be underneath on these sprockets so not too much on top of the sprocket so at least these at the top the light hits them right on top so this will be the brightest point and this will have a little bit of a shadow Now with some overreduced wicked detail white with about 70% reducer in my detail airbrush I'm gonna create a little bit of a highlight here and there on some of these sprockets. So now our background is done and I placed all the tapes on their original place again and now I removed some other pieces of tape and those are also going to be metal plates. Now the reason that I did those separately from the background is if you would do them all at once it's gonna, it's gonna blend with the background and we don't want that. We want this to be separate from the background so that's why we place our tape back. It's gonna create a sharp line so it's gonna create a distinction between the background and the other object that is next to the background or blended in the background or on top of the background. So that's how we can that's how we're gonna create depth in this slur by using our tapes to create sharp lines so that we can create a distinction between what is in the front and what is in the back. So now I got some Vallejo surface primer in the color gloss black in my chamber and I'm just gonna slightly darken those pieces that need to be metallic. Vallejo metal color white aluminium this is an awesome metallic color on the black and we're gonna make all these parts metallic chamber and I'm gonna put highlights on all the metal parts and the sprockets and also on the scratches. So I placed all the masking tape back again and I removed this piece and this piece and now we're gonna do a little bit more metal parts and then we're gonna add some shading to that too. So I got Vallejo metal color aluminium white in my chamber and we're gonna paint these metal parts. Alright, so I placed all the tape back again and I removed all the tape from the cables and now I got Vallejo Game Air Gory Red in my chamber because I want dark reddish cabling and we're gonna do our base for the cables with Gory Red. Now with 
with some wicked detail sepia, I'm going to create shadows on these cables. And now with some Vallejo Gim Air Blood Red, with 70% of reducer, I'm going to create a little bit of highlight here and there on those cables. Alright, so I've placed the tape back on those cables and now I remove the tape from the spine but not the spine itself but the spiky thing is on the spine and we're gonna paint these black and then we're gonna do this in gold because I want the spine to be gold and stick out a little bit from the rest of the bait it's gonna be really cool I think Now it's time to do the bigger pieces of the spine and I'm going to use Vallejo Metal Color Gold for this and then I'm going to create a little bit of shading with some Wicked Detail Sepia in my Detail Airbrush. Now it's time for the coolest part of the entire tuna and that is the chemical substance that runs through these two tubes and we're gonna use fluorescent paints for that. I'm gonna use a white base coat first then I'm gonna cover it with fluo yellow and then I'm gonna darken that yellow or make it green with fluorescent green. some transparent green I'm gonna darken just the edges of the tubes a little bit more and now I mixed some white with fluorescent yellow to create a more opaque yellow and I'm gonna use that to make some bubbles inside that chemical. I'm gonna use my Vallejo Splash stencil here and I taped off parts that I don't want to use so that when I shoot it I only use those little dots that I want to use. It's gonna make it very easy for you to only use the parts that you want on a stencil. So now our inner pattern is finished. I just put some extra masking tape on there for safety reasons and to make sure that no paint comes in between those cracks. But I did make sure that my new masking tape doesn't go further than the old one so that the pattern is still correct when we remove all the masking tape. Now I'm gonna paint the rest of the lure. I'm gonna paint it in a tuna pattern. And I'm not gonna put too much time into it because I already spent about 12 hours on this pattern alone. So I want the focus to be on the cool stuff and not the general stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it very simple on the outside. The tuna pattern is gonna be very plain and simple.
I also want to encourage everyone to, to try to do something similar. Sell a few of your lures and just donate the money to a, a good cause or a non-profit organization for Ukraine just to help them out in, in the way we can. We as fishermen and lure builders can also make a difference and help other people out in any kind of situation by donating some money. We as a fishing community can help out these people in this really nasty situation. I also hope with this video that we can motivate other people to to, to collect some money, to sell some lures, to auction, auction something special and send the money to Ukraine to help out there because all those little differences together make a really big difference. As always guys, I will leave a link in the description below for all the materials that I used and also the blank for this lure is available on lureblanks.eu If you got any questions or suggestions or you want to share some knowledge with the fishing community leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you next time. Bye bye!